going on people, Mike C-Town here with the video that some of you have been asking for, waiting on, and that is my top 30 favorite releases of 2023. Um, I planned to have this video out a bit sooner, but um, you know, shit happens. And as I said in my last video, um, I had some major dental work and I believe I had an infection. So uh, yeah, I just didn't feel like doing much of anything, but all that's in the past, man. All that's in 2023. We're in 2024 now. Okay, so um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and run through some of the albums that I enjoyed the most. As usual, I uh, I make this list uh, according to the projects that I feel like I returned to the most. Um, sort of combined with um, the ones that I think were better. You know, those are two different arguments, but I kind of combine them. Um, also. There's stuff I'm going to forget, like, I, right before I started doing this video, I realized I forgot the Glorious Dead album, which should have been on this list, but I I, can't, I don't have the fucking mental capacity to try to redo this list, so it, it is what it is. There's also albums that I heard too late in the year to try to squeeze on this list, like the new Bonnie Prince Billy, which I just heard a couple weeks ago, so it would have made no sense to try to sneak it on this list, but it is a fantastic album. Regardless, since this is all about sharing music, I think I'm gonna do some uh, honorable mentions, but I'm only gonna drop those down there in the description section so you can check that out. But um, about this list, um, as usual, this is my list. This is not your list. If you do not like my list, there is no one on the planet other than you and maybe your grandmother that gives two shits. But I encourage you to drop your list down there in the comments section and uh, we can all either check it out and pull some new music from it or some other assholes can tear it apart and tell you you have no taste. Um, but yeah, that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into this. I'm gonna try to run through these kind of quickly and not run my mouth like I normally do and like I've been doing so far in this video. Um, but you know, no, no, no promises. You know, new year, old me, you know, but uh, yeah, anyways, let's go. Number 30, we're gonna start with Dawn Raid, To Know The Light. Uh, this is the final Dawn Raid album, apparently, and I think they went out with a bang. Um, it sucks that they won't be making any more music because their brand of black metal was really unique, but um, it is what it is, rest in peace to that band, and I hope those guys go on to do uh, great things. Yeah, number 29. I'm going with the self-titled EP from the band Nurse. Uh, Nurse is an Atlanta punk band that put out this absolutely incredible EP. It's essentially a hardcore uh, EP, but it has some noise rock elements, some kind of post-punk vibes to it, a little death rock in there. It's so good. My only gripe is it's too damn short. At number 28, we have Fishbone, uh, the self-titled EP. I guess this would be the second self-titled EP as the first Fishbone EP was also self-titled. But yeah, another complaint. Um, this is Fishbone's first release in over a decade and it's only an EP. And I just wish it was longer because this sounds as good as they've ever sounded. Great songwriting, great production, and totally infectious songs. Um, even if they do kind of teeter uh, on the ska side of things a bit too much for my normal tastes. Um, number 27, I'm going with Autumn Brigade. I don't know how to pronounce this because some German shit. Um, this is absolutely fantastic, Neo Folk. Um, ever since I heard this project, I've been in love with it. And like the nurse and the fishbone, my only gripe here is that it's too short. I'd love another full length from this project. And, you know, yeah, this is just really, really good neo folk. Um, it's actually openly anti fascist neo folk for all you dorks that say all neo folk is fascist, which is just lazy and stupid. Like, come on, man, if you can do research into finding out which neo folk bands are actually racist, then I feel like you could do a little bit of research to find the ones that aren't because there's actually quite a few. Um, either way, uh, this this project is great. At number 26, we have Fossilization with Leprous Daylight. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that properly, but it is what it is. But yeah, this is death metal exactly how I like my death metal. Dark, dirty, dingy, filthy, gross, with awesome riffs. That's it. Like, this is quite an impressive debut full-length 
for a band. So yeah, at number 25, we have Horse Whip with Consume and Burn. Um, I've talked about these guys before, uh, metallic hardcore from Florida that sounds modern while still kind of appealing to folks like me who were obsessed with this sound in the late 90s and early 2000s, but this is easily their best album. Like, it sounds incredibly aggressive and pissed off, and the musicianship is top notch. Guitars, drumming, vocals, everything is solid here. Um, yeah, moving on, we have number 24. Um, Midoran and the, is this Truha? Truha? Tru, I don't know, but it's a split between that and Midoran. And this is two of the best bands out that play this brand of raw and atmospheric black metal doing a split together. And it's just the best idea in my opinion. Like, I can't even say whose side is better. Like, these bands are just a perfect match. I know Tra dropped a couple other albums this year and they're fantastic as well, but I don't want to list multiple projects from one band on here, so check those out on your own. But anyway, these are some of both bands' strongest songs. At number 23, we have the self-titled album from Daiichi. Um, speaking of unique black metal projects, this is one raw black metal, but it has some interesting additions to the sound. It's really riffy but it also has some some odd almost punky elements to it um there's also some melody thrown in there um either way this is really well done black metal at number 22 i have lamp of murmur with saturnian bloodstorm and yeah man i love this album um sure it does take a small bit of a turn from the previous material but not as big of a turn as people are saying like it's not drastically different um it sounds to me like a love letter to their influences so satiricon dark throne immortal um and i think the biggest change is the production you know i do miss the raw production that some of the older albums had but the music itself is still killer um at number 21 i have full candra with hail the abyss uh, I feel like if you're into dissection, but you're a bit leery of some of the things that come with being a dissection fan, then this is for you. But more than that, it sounds like a great melodic death metal album, um, and it's played with precision. So definitely give that a go if you have not. Um, at number 20, I have Natfard with The Abyss. Uh, two abysses in a row, I just now realized that. Um, you know, any time, my boy has a project, it's gonna be good, and it's more than likely gonna be on my uh, end of the year list. And this is great, and it's a partnership with Alex Poole from Chaos Moon, who's also an incredible musician. So, so yes, yeah, so this is really good, and it's exactly what you'd expect from two modern black metal legends. Uh, number 19, I have Majesties with Vast Reaches Unclaimed, and this is melodic death metal exactly how it should be played. It brings me all the way back to the 90s when I was first getting into this sound. Uh, it immediately gives me Lunar Strain and Sky Dancer vibes, and it's just played so well. Whoo! At number 18, we have Gate to Dawn with two. Uh, another really unique black metal album from someone that seems to have randomly kind of popped up on my radar. Um, I believe I bought their last album just on a whim because I liked the cover. Um, but the music is incredible. Really fuzzed out guitars with this, with this wash of psychedelia that fits really well with the music. Number 17, I'm going with Shirley Collins. Archangel Hill. Uh, Shirley Collins is one of the most important people from the British folk scene, and I couldn't be happier that after over 60 years, we're still getting these beautiful, heartfelt folk albums from her. At number 16, Poison Ruin with Harvest. I'm not even sure how to describe this except for just really well-written, well-played, infectious, kind of lo-fi punk rock. That's what it is, man, and it is awesome. Uh, at number 15, we have Arctin with uh, what translates to third disaster, according to the Googles. Um, I love this band, and I think they deserve so much more notoriety than what they have. Um, it's really well played and executed atmospheric black metal. Um, at number 14, Revenant Marquise with All the Pleasures of Heaven, the absolute masters of the the evil dark 
twisted style of raw black metal that sounds like it was absolutely recorded in a dungeon, a trash can in a dungeon. But God damn, it is really, really fucking good. Um, number 13, we have Backworld with For the Life of the World. This is a classic World Serpent era Neil Folk band. Um, not many of you guys would even care or even understand what that reference is, but man, this band has not released anything in almost 10 years, and this is actually a return to the amazing stuff that they were doing back in the late 90s. So if you like Neil Folk, I feel like you will love this album. Uh, number 12. Lana Del Rey with Did You Know That There's a Tunnel Under Ocean Boulevard. Um, I don't even know what to say here about this album. It's a Lana Del Rey album, and it's great, as the vast majority of Lana Del Rey albums are. Um, but yeah, it's a really beautiful listen. At number 11, we have Spanish Love Songs with No Joy. Um, so this one hasn't caught me quite the way that Brave Faces Everyone did, um, but it's still a really well-written, a uh, really heartfelt rock album with tons of curmudgeonly poignant lyrics. Um, I have a feeling that this is going to click harder at some point soon, but um, but right now, number 11 is where it sits. Um, number 10, I'm going with Blood Magic with Goetic? Goetic? I don't know. Blood Spells. I should have looked that up, but I just fucking didn't. Um, raw, nasty black metal with no gimmicks or anything. Just, just really grim filthy riffs and disgusting vocals. It is just great. Number nine, I don't know how to pronounce any of this shit. Um, Alte Seon, that's all you're gonna get out of me. Uh, you can read the rest right there. Um, not sure what it is about this album, but I found myself returning to this a lot. Um, this is a one person US black metal project that plays some of the most hypnotic black metal I've heard since, since Transylvanian Hunger. Um, I'm not saying it sounds like Transylvanian Hunger, so don't leave dumb comments, but um, either way, this album is fantastic and I cannot wait to see what this project does next. Uh, number eight, going with Panopticon, The Rhyme of Memory. Uh, in my opinion, this is the best thing Austin has done since Roads to the North. Uh, it's great, folky, and riffy black metal with tons of style, and I love that the vocals aren't buried like they've been previously, but yeah, this album is just so good. Alright, this seems like it is the black metal run of the list. Um, number seven, Ceremonial Energy with Perennial Morbid Rapture. Um, so yeah, this is rumored to be the guy from Black Solis, and if that's true, you can kind of tell from the music. Uh, it's really raw and underproduced black metal with a lot of mystery, and it legit sounds spooky, in my opinion, but um, it's really, really good. At number six, uh, a project I haven't heard a lot of folks talking about, and another project I don't know how to pronounce. Um, I've been saying Oryx in my head, but that's probably not right. But, um, but yeah, I absolutely love this stuff. This is the guy from Hypothermia playing really, really, really good atmospheric black metal with incredible riffs. Um, he dropped three demos all in the same year, and they're all incredible. But as I said, I don't want to list three separate projects from one artist on the same list. Luckily for me, they also put out a compilation of those three demos. So yeah, that's what I have listed here, but I urge you to go listen to those demos individually because they're all a little bit different, but they're all fantastic. All right, we are now moving in to the top five favorite releases of 2023. God damn! Number five, we have Depeche Mode with Memento Mori. This was a big shock for me. Um, I haven't played close attention to Depeche Mode over the last few years. I've listened to the albums and, you know, they've been cool, but none of them spoke to me the way this one does. It's dark, it's experimental, but it's still really catchy. And the vocals, my God, they, they, they sound incredible. So yeah, number five there. Uh, number four, we have House of Harm with Playground. I was anticipating the shit out of this one and yeah it's so goddamn good dark wave if you want to call it that played heavenly 
okay? I promise if you haven't heard this and someone played this for you, uh, you'd be mind blown to hear that it didn't come out in the 80s. This screams goth club to me, okay? And it screams to the early 2000s goth that I was, all right? I love this album. It makes me so happy when a band can properly follow up their debut album and even take it up a notch, which this one does. It's so good. Um, number three, probably gonna piss some people off, but I don't give a fuck. Uh, Villa Vallo with Neon Noir. Uh, at this point, I'm a hymn lifer, y'all. Uh, I, I, I've enjoyed everything the band Him has done. And when they broke up, eh, I was a bit sad. You know, um, I, I might even shed a little thug tear, but I've been listening to this band for 25 years, which is crazy. But yeah, I didn't really care for that Bill Avalo and the Agents uh, album. I didn't like that much at all. Um, so I figured I was never getting this sound again, the sound of him and enter Neon Noir. And even though it's labeled a solo album, it sounds like a him record, okay? And it is fantastic. All right, at number two, we have Co-Defendants with This Is Crime Wave. Um, this is Chesky, uh, and then it's also Sam from Get Dead, together doing a punk album with a hip-hop edge to it, um, which sounds goofy on paper, but it works unbelievably well, and Fat Mike from No Effects is involved as well, and yeah, man, these songs are just so well-crafted with great riffs and really, really well-written lyrics that you will absolutely be singing to yourself. Um, and yeah, moving in to the number one spot of my favorite releases of 2023, we have... Anani and the Johnsons with My Back Was a Bridge for You to Cross. I can't tell y'all how many times I've listened to this album. Um, yeah, it, when I'm relaxing at home or when I'm working or when I just need to chill out or whatever, it is such a beautiful record, a beautifully bizarre record. Anani uh, seriously has one of the most, if not the most, beautiful voices in music right now like i absolutely cannot get enough of this album i hope to be able to see this performed live um but god this is a beautiful soulful just incredibly uh a uh, heart-wrenching album it's just gorgeous so yeah that is my number one and um yeah i guess that's it. Um, I won't sit here and hold y'all any longer, but I would like to once again ask that y'all drop your lists down there in the comment section. I would love to see what y'all are listening to. But yeah, um, that's going to do it for this video, man. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Um, as usual, thank you for living. Thank you for loving. Thank you for being you. And I'll see y'all next time. I Peace out, boy. Oh, and maybe I'll do an anticipations video. We'll see how I feel. But um yeah, peace out. Bye.